This is the Business Marketing and Finance Podcast. The podcast for all your business marketing and financial needs. Get insight from experienced professionals as they delve deep into their passions and share their knowledge each week with your host, Daryl James. Like to follow or learn more? You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button now. Welcome everyone to this week's BMF podcast. I'm your host, Dow James, and my next guest has worked across a range of industries, working for such companies as Aid Fuels Oil Group, Water Music Festival, and Google. She is now the marketing executive for Softex Limited. Welcome Nikki Bruce to the Business Marketing Finance Podcast. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Nikki. Thanks hi. for being on the show. Can you tell us a bit about your journey, what it was like growing up, and how you made the turning point to the woman who you are today? Yeah, so um, growing up, I always enjoyed being creative. Um, so writing was a big thing for me. I remember when I was about seven or eight, I used to write bedtime stories for my little sisters <laughs> and kind of read them to them. Yeah. Um, so I always knew that I wanted to do something along those lines. I just was never really sure what it was. So I kind of toyed with the idea of being a journalist, mm-hmm. um, being an author. And then when I was at uni, I uh, did a marketing module as part of my degree and realized that that was actually something that I really loved doing and something that I wanted to continue continue progressing in. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think me and my parents were always really a really good um, source for that. So I remember kind of summer holidays sitting in the, the back garden reading books with my mom and we were always encouraged to kind of, you know, follow what made us happy and kind of encouraged to go to uni. So, yeah, I think my background really helped me get to where I am today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What was your first job like? How did you transition from university to your first role? Um, so my first role, I was a marketing and sales assistant for a luxury co- a jewelry company yeah. um, based in Birmingham. So they were called Deacon and Francis. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was kind of the standard finished uni, kind of knew what area I wanted to work in. So I started looking for marketing jobs, um, applied for it. And then that was really the turning point. So I had a really good mentor at that job and she taught me loads of things that I still use today Mm -hmm. and made me realize that the areas of marketing that I really wanted to focus on, which was kind of social media content and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And what was it like working for Google? I understand that you worked for Google for a time. Yeah, so um, I worked for the Google Digital Garage, which was a six six month pop up project in Birmingham City Centre Library. Mm. Um, yeah, that was one of the highlights of my career. So it was kind of a workshop environment. Um, local businesses could come in and they'd get a chance to talk to us. So there were about five or six of us. We, uh, we were called the technicians, and we each focused on different areas of marketing. So my specialism was content and social media mm-hmm. and um, we kind of give one-to-one advice so they'd come in ask us how they could improve their business marketing and we'd give them advice yeah. often they used to come back every week which was good so you could kind of see how they were progressing yeah. help them along their journey so that was a really rewarding thing to do yeah yeah what was the training like before you actually started it? Um, the training was good so uh, we had a few Specialists from Google come down. Uh, we had about a week's worth of training before that. Mm-hmm. A quick run through of all the products, so kind of Google Analytics, AdWords. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and they were always there to support us. So we'd be given these kind of training sessions every day. Mm-hmm. And then if we ever had anything bigger, so if a client was having problems with their AdWords account or something like that, they were always on hand so we could escalate it further. Yeah. Uh, and we also got to meet the, I think she was the chairman of Google in the Netherlands, which was good. So yeah. it was kind of an eye into the Google world and just yeah. kind of how far they reach and all the different products they have. So yeah, it was, it was a really good experience. Yeah. And um, moving on to your um, self-employed route, what was your mission in the outset working self-employed? Um, so I had my son Noah um, and... I, want, I didn't want to miss all of the important things of his childhood yeah, yeah. and kind of working for myself freelance from home seemed the perfect way to do that so I didn't have to give up my career I could still be around for Noah and yeah. I just 
I really loved working with different businesses and helping different people. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like every day was different and you'd get to work across all these different areas yeah. and had a really good work-life balance. So I didn't feel that I was kind of sacrificing my home life for my career. I didn't feel that I was sacrificing my career for my home life. So it worked really well in that sense. Yeah. And along your journey, did you have mentors? I know you said your your parents supported you and encouraged you to go to university. Did you have any mentors along this journey? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I mentioned Deacon and Francis. Um, yeah. the, the woman there who really helped me uh, was called Anne-Marie Hanlon. Mm-hmm. I think she's now um, a doctor of marketing she teaches at Derby Uni Mm -hmm. but she she was really good so she was really inspiring she taught me loads of things that I still use today um recommended loads of resources that were really good and yeah so for the first few years she was always there on hand and I could ask her any questions Mm -hmm. and she was really good when I started um being self-employed so she gave me some work to start with and introduced me to to new customers oh nice yeah yeah yeah, so she was really good. And how important do you think mentors are to an entrepreneur's journey or to a marketer's um, journey? Um, yeah, really important. So it's good to have someone who is where you want to be so you can kind of see the, the steps that they took to get there, mm. but also just someone to guide you. So if you've got questions that maybe you might feel not silly for asking but you're not really sure who to ask it's always good to have someone to go to and someone that you know is going to encourage you and and help you as much as they can yeah so i think for me it was a really a really good positive experience having a marina yeah yeah and along with mentors something that can help us along the way do you read a lot of books yeah so um i think one of my resolutions this year was to try and read a book a week which i've kind of managed to stick to um but yes, yeah, so those some of the books that I found really useful this year, especially. Yeah. Uh, there's one by Dan Kelsall. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got a bit of a swear word, so it's called "Effing Good Content." Okay. But I really like that book because it was refreshing. So I think in the marketing industry, especially, yeah. there's a lot of kind of people feel like they've got to keep secrets and not share with each other sure. their secrets. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Dan's book was really refreshing, so he's kind of not sugarcoating it just this is what worked for me this is what didn't it might work for you it might not yeah, but yeah the way, the way that he wrote it was just really good so I definitely recommend giving that a read yeah um, and then there's a book by Jen Sincero called yeah. You Are a Badass How to Stop yeah. Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life Great book. so yeah. <laughs> that was really good just for generally like changing my mindset so yeah. thinking positively makes positive things happen yeah. and just believing in myself so that made a really big difference to my life yeah. um so after reading that I kind of thought more about my career made the jump to working at soft Techs where I'm a lot happier I kind yeah. of I feel like I've got more of a direction in what I want to do now yeah 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 and then I suppose finally another book um, that has really helped me this year is the Pinch of Nom recipe book. <laughs> so a bit of a weird one, but since I've kind of started taking care of my physical health more, I feel a lot better mentally. That's so cool. I'm kind of focusing more on, on what I eat, yeah. exercising, and then that's helped my career as well. So I feel yeah. more refreshed more inspired and yeah so it's just I think the books this year have just helped me really get more of a, a balance in kind of my work life and my personal life yeah definitely sure now do, are you are you a lover of music do you like music a lot yeah um so music's always been something that's been kind of my part of my identity um yeah. growing up I kind of express myself through music I identified myself through the kind of music that I listen to so it's always been kind of more than a hobby it's part of my personality I feel yeah yeah I realized that you worked with a water music festival what was that like that was really good so um water music festival came to me when I was freelance and they needed some help with their marketing Mm -hmm. and that was the first time that I really got to work in the the music industry but then after doing that I realized how much I loved it and how much I really wanted to work more in that industry yeah. Uh, so it was kind of like tying two parts of my life together. So music, which has always been really important to me. Mm-hmm. And then my career, they kind of came together. And the whole time that I was doing it, I, was, I loved it. And I was really inspired in kind of like all areas of my life. So yeah. that was, that really helped me 
get into the music industry. Yeah, and yeah. then from there, I wanted to get more experience in that. So mm-hmm. I started writing for Dead Press, which is a music review mm-hmm. website. Mm. And through that, I got to meet some of kind of like my childhood heroes from bands that I listened to since I was 15. Wow. So the whole thing was just an amazing experience. Yeah. And usually the marketer's journey is, is not usually a straight one. Did you know what you were doing every step of the way? Did you have an action plan or did you have to deviate from the strategy or completely change what you were doing sometimes? Yeah, I think um, for me, I kind of see marketing strategies as a guide. So it's not something that you can stick to rigidly because things change. Things are sometimes more successful than you realize they were going to be. And you kind of have to play on that as as and when the opportunity comes up. So, um, yeah, I've always got kind of a plan in mind, but not something that I stick to rigidly. So I think with marketing, being flexible is really important. Yeah, yeah, sure. Definitely. Can you tell us a little bit about your current role at Softex? Yeah, so um, I am the sole marketing executive at Softext. Mm-hmm. Um, I came into the company to build the marketing strategy from the ground up. So before I was here, they didn't really have a marketing person. Mm-hmm. So it's been a bit of a challenge from that point of view, but it's also really good because I've been able to make the role my own. Um, I'm kind of very much still figuring out what works for the business and kind of immersing myself in the industry yeah. but it's a really great place so the team that I've got here are really supportive mm-hmm. uh, really creative people as well so we can all bounce off each other yeah yeah and how many people do you have in your team um there's five of us at the moment and then we have some freelance trainers as well which we see occasionally and what type of roles do the five members cover um so we've got some sales guys which they're really good so they're kind of like some of the best sales people that i've ever met um the tech guys are amazing so rob and jake work with businesses to understand their software needs um we sell crm and accounting software so they'll kind of understand what the business needs help them implement it and then we've got the trainers who provide training on the software Mm -hmm. and they're all really knowledgeable people so they've been in the industry for kind of like 20 30 years so they know that Nice. And what, for the people that don't know, what are the type of services or products rather that Softex supplies? Um, so we sell Sage accounting software. So we've got Sage 50 cloud accounts, um, HR software, and then ACT CRM as well. Um, we also do training manuals for Sage. So if you wanted to teach yourself or just have, have a book there as a refresher, we sell those. Yeah. And also on-site training. So you can have a specialist come in and train you and your team. Yeah, nice, nice. Now, over the years, you've worked in many different businesses and helping them build their greatest story. Can you tell the audience how you, how you did that, how you helped them to, um, you know, they're starting from the ground up and they want to, you know, reach more customers, reach more clients. Can you tell them, you know, your typical scenarios that you might build? Yeah, so I think for any business, the most important thing is understanding your customer base and who you're really trying to talk to. So I always like to start with um, building kind of audience personas and getting into the mindset of the people that they're trying to talk to and trying to sell to. And that way you can figure out how they they're going to digest the story so if they've got a younger audience maybe yeah. kind of be more active on social media to tell the success stories would be be useful mm-hmm. um maybe if they're going more b2b then they might want to do um kind of like more video case studies getting out there meeting people having like professional looking packs showing their examples of what they've done so mm-hmm. yeah i think the main thing is really understanding who your audience is and how to talk to them yeah, no, definitely. I can completely agree. It always starts with the audience. Now, yeah. businesses build their brands. Can you tell me how you yourself build your own brand, your personal brand? Yeah, so um, especially over the last couple of years or so, yeah. I've realized how much I actually love learning new stuff. So whenever I see an opportunity to, to learn something different, so if there's a course or an event, I always try and get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's great to learn from other people that are kind of doing what you want to do or where you want to be. Yeah, yeah. And also just kind of keeping up to date with what's happening in, in the industry. So every day I'm kind of quickly skimming through different different sites to see what's new, what's happening, what I can try. So, yeah, yeah just always constantly learning mm-hmm. and being around people that are, are where I want to be, really. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Is there anything that you want to see in the next five years within the scope of marketing? Yeah, so I think it'd be 
it'd be nice if um, it became more accessible to smaller businesses. So I think now people are starting to realize that they, they don't need massive budgets to, to compete with the bigger companies. Yeah. But with the, the technology that's around at the minute, anyone can do marketing. So if you take the time to learn it and get into it, yeah you're the best person to speak for your brand. So it'd be nicer to see more small businesses and even freelance people mm. kind of jumping on that and, and making use of the technology. Yeah, definitely. And what new technology or software are you most excited about right now? Um, so since coming into Softext, I've started using more automated marketing through um, ACT Automated Marketing. Mm -hmm. It's something that's, I know it's been around for a few years, but I've never really had the opportunity to use it. Yeah. But since being here, I've seen the benefits of it. So you can kind of automate your replies, keep in touch with your customers yeah. without actually needing to put too much time into it. So once you kind of know the flow's working, mm -hmm. it does the work for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just think that is amazing. So for small businesses who don't have a marketing team, being able to use that kind of technology, yeah. it really transforms the business. Yeah. And then um, you don't even need to be good at, uh, like photoshop and editing anymore so there's mm -hmm. a thing that i use a lot called canva yeah, yeah. which is amazing for for social media graphics mm -hmm. reports presentations so yeah there's kind of no excuse for for not having a go i think yeah yeah no i completely agree especially with canva i find canva yeah. is so simple to use um <laughs> It's, it's, it's actually quite revolutionary, to be fair. Uh, yeah. That might take you, you know, double the time sometimes to produce the same type of graphics, going through fonts and things. The, the templates that they provide you with is really good. So, yeah, by all means, any small businesses out there, um, use Canva all day long. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So I, can, I use Photoshop sometimes, but I prefer to use Canva a lot of the time because like you said, it's just easier. Mm. It looks so good as well. And yeah, I just, I can't rate Canva enough. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> now in your role, do you focus a lot on PPC and SEO, social media or traditional forms of marketing, say your print, billboard, television, those type of things? What, what do you tend seems to work for your, um, I imagine it's B2B that you work with? Yeah, so it's B2B, but also a little bit B2C. So um, we have a lot of students that buy the manual. So if you wanted to go into accounting, you might want to do a sort of a self-study yeah. course at home, which, which we offer as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we mostly do digital marketing, um, PPC, SEO, social media. Mm -hmm. But we do have plans to do a bit more traditional marketing as well. So we're going to be... Um, appearing at some more exhibitions mm -hmm. we might have print campaigns surrounding those so kind of sending out invites to local businesses mm -hmm. um getting some brochures made getting some catalogs that kind of thing as well so it's going to be a mix of, of both worlds really yeah yeah sure and what are the top three platforms you think new businesses should focus on in the next 12 months and why um i think definitely a crm solution so whether it's one of the free ones like HubSpot is really good or if you can afford it, something like ACT is great for small businesses. Mm -hmm. But just somewhere where you can track all of your customer interactions, you can track your marketing results and see what's working. Yeah. Um, and if you can automate a lot of your customer service processes as well, then that will really, really help your business. Yeah, yeah. Um, social media dashboards as well. So I use Hootsuite, which is great for organizing social media, um, planning it in, in advance. So I kind of spend a couple of hours each month at the start of the month planning what I want to go out on social media. Yeah. And then I'll write the posts, create the graphics, and then schedule them into Hootsuite. Yeah. And that way you kind of know that it's it's going on in the background and it's taken care of. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And then... Uh, the entire Google suite, really. So things like Keyword Planner are great for understanding your audience, what they're searching for. Um, Google Trends is good. So if you kind of don't know what to post about on social media, yeah. you can use Google Trends to see what's happening in your industry yeah. and maybe create content that's relevant to your audience and your business. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then obviously Google Analytics is really important to understand who your audience is, um, whether what you're doing is reaching them yeah. and just seeing how much your traffic's growing so you can kind of it's proof that your your marketing is working yeah, definitely and in your opinion what is the best way to launch an unusual product or service um 
I think it comes back to really understanding your audience again. So honing in on your audience, immersing yourself in in their culture, and really thinking about what problem the product solves, and and kind of relaying that to your audience. So yeah, again, it depends on who your audience is and and figuring out the best way to speak to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now. Nikki, finally, if you could tell your younger self anything, what would it be? Um, not to worry so much, because I always kind of had a plan and thought I needed to stick to the plan and do this and that, but life is unpredictable, so mm-hmm. kind of just go with the flow, and even that works with marketing. So like I mentioned before, mm-hmm. something might turn out to be more successful than you thought, so you've got to kind of take advantage of that in the moment. That's so, right. yeah. yeah, maybe tell myself it's good to have a plan, but... I don't have to stick rigidly to that plan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What's the vision of Nikki Bruce? What gets you most excited about the years ahead? Um, I'd really like to do a master's in marketing. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, that's the next step. Um, and then see where it goes from that. So I've always kind of wanted to go on and do a PhD. Okay. <laughs> so right. yeah, probably taking the next step, just learning, continually learning um, and seeing what else I can do really. Yeah, yeah. No, that was really good. Uh, finally, where can people connect with you for a consultation or your social media links, LinkedIn, uh, your website to your company? Yeah, so I'm on LinkedIn. So my profile is Nikki, N-I-K-K-I dot Bruce, B-R-U-C-E, and then the number one. Or um, people can reach me by email. So uh, my email is Nikki, N-I-K-K-I, dot bruce b-r-u-c-e 29 at gmail.com um if you were interested in soft text or any of the the products that we sell mm-hmm. the, the website is softtext.co.uk nice 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 well nikki i do thank you very much for being on the show thank you for taking the time this morning is there any last words you'd like to say to the audience um firstly thank you to you daryl for having me on the show and um, yeah, so just figure out what you love doing. So I, I find out that I love doing social and content, and that's the areas that I focused on. Mm. And from there, it, it became a really rewarding career for me and something that I want to continue doing mm. and progressing in. So, yeah, always kind of follow what you love doing. Yeah, wise words, Nikki, wise words. Thank you again Thank for being on the show. I myself has been Daryl James, your host. This has been a Business Marketing Finance Podcast. We'll see you all next week. Thank you. This is the Business Marketing and Finance Podcast. The podcast for all your business marketing and financial needs. Get insight from experienced professionals as they delve deep into their passions and share their knowledge each week with your host, Daryl James. Like to follow or learn more? You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button now.